The key point of this simulation is that the tightrope walker has some minimum reaction time. This means he can adjust to problems, but only if those problems arise slowly rather than quickly. The main problem he might face is that his center of gravity could become misaligned with the rope. A torque is generated in that case, and this torque will cause angular acceleration about the pivot point at his feet. If the acceleration is too great, he won't have time to recover. There are three ways to decrease his rotational acceleration. One is to decrease the tilt angle. Basically, he shouldn't lean over for any reason. The other is to lower his center of gravity so that the torque due to gravity is lower. But if he does lean over, perhaps due to a wind or a misstep, we can still decrease his resultant acceleration by having a large rotational inertia. The best way to increase his inertia is to have a long, massive tightrope walker's pull. The longer the pull, the more inertia it creates and the more slowly the walker accelerates about the pivot point. The best situation for the tightrope walker is to have a very long and flexible heavy pull. This lowers the center of gravity by a lot. It also gives the walker lots of inertia. This means the acceleration is very low. If he tilts over a little bit, he'll probably have time to react. Let's look at a worst case scenario, but don't worry, we won't allow him to fall. We'll just give him a little scare. Let's make the pole as small as possible, as stiff as possible, and as light as possible. Then let's lean him over quite a bit. What happens to his acceleration? Is it higher? Yes. This means he's not going to have a lot of time to react. The graph at left gives us an idea of how the rotational inertia, also known as moment of inertia, of the pole increases with length. It isn't a linear relationship. The inertia depends on the square of the length. This means if you double the pole length, the inertia quadruples. Longer poles really help. The graph at right gives us an idea of how the angular acceleration of the system depends on the applied torque. The torque is calculated by taking the horizontal distance from the pivot point at the walker's feet to the center of gravity and multiplying this by the total weight of the system. If you divide this torque by the total rotational inertia of the system, which includes both the pole's inertia but also the walker's inertia, you'll get the angular acceleration shown. Play around and see what you can figure out.